Hello and welcome to another out of spec reviews video. This is one of our colder ones. It's currently minus 20 degrees Celsius on its way down to minus 30 degrees Celsius by the end of tonight. So that puts us at what minus four degrees Fahrenheit getting down to minus 20 Fahrenheit plus or minus going to get really freaking cold. I've got my Rivian out for some testing because Rivian actually just sent a software update that includes their new snow mode. So I want to go out and test their snow mode. I've sort of got this, my truck, in the ultimate winter configuration. And I want to walk you through what I've done. Uh, and I want to try out some of the snow modes. I want to try acceleration in all-purpose versus snow. I want to try regen braking in all-purpose high with their new low regen setting for snow. I'll talk about why that's really important here in just a second. But it's freezing, so let's make this a pretty quick intro and uh, get in the truck and do some testing. <laughs> Well, welcome to a very cold Fort Collins, Colorado. We have a whole bunch of testing over the next two days where it's just going to be deep, deep freezing here. And we're actually kicking off our testing with the R1T. Um, so I knew winter was coming. So the first thing I did was I called up Nokian and I said, hey, we need some aggressive winter tires. So I actually have the Nokian Hakapalita uh, SUV studded tires. I'll leave a link to this uh, product below. It's pretty similar to the EV specific studded tire. It doesn't have the foam on the inside for noise, but they're actually not loud at all. You can barely hear them. Uh, the studs are relatively quiet. And the reason I went for studded tires is, well, Nokian's our sponsor and I wanted the most aggressive tire I could get. Also, where we plan to take this is actually ice racing up at Georgetown Lake a few times this winter. So I like to have studs because here in the front range, it's probably not totally necessary, but we do get some icy patches. We get a couple days full of ice, probably three days from now is going to be a super icy day as all this starts to melt and then freeze. And I have to say, I've already gotten, I think, our monies out of them our money out of these things, just like an awesome tire in crazy uh, conditions. So can't say enough good things about this. This makes the truck pretty much unstoppable. If you live in a cold climate, don't skimp out on tires, get winter specific tires. And we're gonna be testing a whole bunch of different ones for you over the coming months. Um, what else? Because my ears are about to freeze off here. Uh, Rivian sent an update to the truck. The truck's gotten so much better since the first day I got it. They've made the suspension softer in comfort mode. They claim that they backed off the stiffness a little bit in sport mode, I believe, as well, to make it handle better. I always noticed the truck was really bouncy in sport mode, so I have to try that when the roads clear off. Um, we also have, they fixed some bugs in the system. They made, uh, tuned some of the battery settings so it doesn't regen as hard when it's really freaking cold outside, which I think it was a bit too aggressive. So they did some things for battery longevity. They also made it so that it, it can regen longer on downhills. One thing we've noticed when towing with this truck is we keep hitting regen limits and all of our regen goes away on, you know, going down I-70 and some of the mountains. So that seems to be fixed or at least improved. But the big one is snow mode. So first of all, uh, you can now put your heated seats and heated steering wheel on uh, when you precondition the truck from your app, a huge welcome addition. There's still no way to leave climate running when you leave the truck. Like in Tesla, you can just say leave climate on. Here, what you have to do is actually put it into dog mode in pet comfort, and that's the way to leave climate on or in show and tell, but then the lights, you know, the truck's just on. Um, but let's talk snow mode really quick. The main problem that we've noticed with Rivians in the snow has nothing to do with its handling or acceleration. In my opinion, it was all about the regen. And when we initially tested the review truck, if you watch that really long in-depth nerdy driving review, I'd actually maybe I made a whole snow video about it. It would actually lock the wheels up at about seven miles an hour and skid to a stop. And it really needed better tuning. So now they have blended that brake uh, friction what, what am I trying to say? That regen friction brake, brake blending point to be smoother and not lock up as much. And we're going to be doing some testing in normal mode, all purpose and high, which they've also improved since we tested it and this now. So, okay, I think we're all about to get frostbite out here. It's really cold. So let's jump in the truck and uh, do some testing. A couple we? things more I just wanted to mention now that we're inside the truck. Uh, this is the large battery four motor quad motor system here. I know Rivian's working on their dual motor trucks that will launch soon. Everything we're talking about here is for the quad motor with the medium sized battery pack, the large one. 
we're going to be touching on the dual motor stuff as soon as we have the option to drive. I've also noticed a few Rivian owners comment about their efficiency in cold weather just plummeting, especially with short trips, running the heater, pushing snow out of the way. Take a look at this. I'm getting 0.88 miles per kilowatt hour and uh, it's minus four degrees Fahrenheit right now. So nothing to be alarmed at. If you go on a trip, the battery will come up to temperature and your uh, consumption will level off. Actually, the shorter the trips, the worse efficiency you'll have because it tries to spike heat into everything. But in cold temperatures, electric cars use more energy, of course, to keep the cabin warm. And uh, with that, let's uh, go up into the hills here in beautiful Northern Colorado and uh, see what this thing is like in some acceleration, or I should say undulations and some corners in snow mode versus the other modes. So you join me in the Rivian now, and um, yeah, let's do some testing. We have some awesome roads right here, totally untouched uh, roads that are just being uh, plowed here. Let's go a little bit more heat up on the windshield, I would say. Um, and what I, sh what I think we should do is we'll start in all purpose, which is, this is how I typically drive the vehicle. We're in some fresh powder right here. First of all, these snow tires are just beasts. They're totally insane. So I'm gonna cut the lights off in the interior here. And uh, let's just drive this thing a little bit. Let me see if I can clear this. Uh, well, it looks like the washer fluid is a little bit frozen. Should be heated, but it's barely barely heated. So what I want to do is get us up on this constant radius grade hill. And we're in pretty much fresh snow. Again, great snow tires. But let's get an idea from an interior view and then we'll have some exterior shots of a fully stopped wide open acceleration in uh, all purpose mode. And then we're going to do the same thing in snow mode. So let's see if we feel any uh, major differences here. So stopped, full throttle. So I can feel the back tires are pushing quite a bit amazing traction control and there's 40 miles an hour so we'll do a zero to 40 on each and then huge regen of course in uh in uh, uh you know high regen when i come over here to snow mode nothing changes the ride height stays the same I don't hear any uh, mechanical actuators going like what sometimes when I go into sport mode it changes the suspension a little bit. Um, it all is staying pretty consistent. The visibility is not so great here, but that is because our washer jets are just not built for minus four degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so let's, uh, let's juice it here in snow mode right now and see if we notice anything different from a traction control perspective. Full power, three, two, one. Very similar maybe a little bit less aggressive, and there's 40 miles an hour. Much less regen I'm noticing in low. We'll do the regen test on the downhill. So from a wide open throttle perspective, I'm not seeing much difference between the two. And honestly, there's not much more you can do than just keep the tires spinning a little bit faster than you're going. Um, it's not like a uh, slip start in a Tesla where it allows a lot more wheel spin in the snow. I'm not really getting that vibe. But this is low visibility. I mean, good thing we know this road, there's huge cliffs off of here, so we really don't wanna go off. Um, but low visibility and you know, pretty gnarly. Up here at the top, you can see the wind's been so crazy that there's no snow cover there. We come down in the divot, now we're right back into it. And so now we're just cruising fresh powder. This is awesome. Um, couple things snow mode does here, which is really nice. First of all, um, what's, what's a little bit odd, and let's see if it's a speed thing. Yeah, it was a speed thing, but it gives you high standard and low suspension, which is the same. So the idea of this mode, like I mentioned, is not really to be used in an off-road setting, but on-road. So what am I noticing different on-road from all-purpose? And we'll go back and play around with you uh, with both, but instantly I'm noticing much different throttle pedal tuning. And it just really elongates the throttle tip in. The wide open throttle uh, seems to give you the same amount of power or at least enough to spin all four, which is what we're doing here. Uh, but from a throttle application standpoint, really smooth, really progressive. It also seems to, in my impression, use a little bit more front motor than rear motor. Interesting, there's someone up here in front of us. Uh, so I would say, as I give it more and more throttle, there's wide open throttle. 
yeah, I mean, just incredible traction from the Nokian tires, of course. It is truly insane how much traction these tires have. Uh, but yeah, it just feels like it's pulling more than pushing. That's great. The second thing that, that Rivian has introduced here, which I think makes the biggest difference, is actually the regen setting. Now, I never had an issue with the Rivian in snow. I've had the Rivian in snow multiple times on multiple occasions, on-road and off-road, all on YouTube. You can take a look at one of our out-of-spec motoring road trips in a Rivian early on. I took one over the La Salles, and I was in some real deep mud, snow, slush, gnarly conditions, and it handled it wonderfully. The biggest problem that I had with this car, this truck, was uh, with the regenerative braking. And what it would actually do is it didn't have really good wheel speed control when it was transitioning from regenerative braking to friction braking. And this handover period, it happened at about seven miles an hour or so, would actually lock the wheels and we would end up skidding. And so, what they've now just introduced as part of this uh, snow mode update is a low brake regen situation and it defaults in this mode. Now, if I go to all purpose, I believe I can not select low. You only get high or standard, interesting. So in snow mode, it unlocks the low regen setting, which um, changes the entire throttle pedal tuning like I mentioned and really just um, gives you a lot less regen but not as little as you would think if I lift off here 30 miles an hour take a look we're still slowing down pretty quick now I don't know if this car in front of us is getting stuck but I just stopped and they're going up the hill great so we're gonna find the next spot to turn around because what I want to do is use that really steep hill and demonstrate the different regen modes um, in terms of confidence coming into a corner here, I can come into a corner, stab the throttle wide open, be a complete idiot behind the wheel, start grabbing at the wheel, making the car do some really stupid things. And yeah, it's not, uh, not scary at all. I mean, it's so easy to control. A, we have you know great tires, but B, we have really good traction control, really good stability control. Um, we're, you know, you're right up there on some of the best um, you know, software aids to get you down the road that you could ever imagine here in the Rivian. So very pleased. Look, this is not no joke here. This is some pretty deep, deep powdery stuff. I'm going to make a U-turn here. We're right up there. Yeah, up here. Yeah, mm -hmm. we can do it up here. Um, and it, honestly, you would have no idea we're in this much snow. I mean, it's just... Uh, and you would have no idea that that's literally a reservoir right there. Right. You definitely <laughs> don't want to go off. Uh, in that yeah. direction at all, or really the other direction, because the other direction is uh, actually the runway. Mm -hmm. So here we are making an Austin Powers type maneuver and accelerating away, nothing to see here. So let's send it in snow mode through the corner. So steering input, consistent input, I can feel it changing the drivetrain where the power is going to help reduce understeer and but not increase oversteer there's full power constant input you can see it just is going turning really nice tuning now with four motors you can actually do some really interesting things so just to give you a, i guess an extreme example i can go here to off-road and then i can go into the turn off stability into the drift setting here and just to show you you know i was full throttle there watch what happens when we go hard throttle here now we start oversteering the truck and I, of course, am not going to do anything crazy on public roads. Um, you know, of course, we want to be respectful to, um, you know, not being on a track or anything like that. But it is really neat that I can basically come into a corner like this, stab the throttle, and look, get major, major oversteer, and of course, have still have wonderful control over the vehicle. So, really love this multiple character that you can get out of this truck, especially when you can do skids like that. Really fun. Uh, I wouldn't say it's as um, magical as Tesla's track mode, if you will. I still think there's quite a bit more to unlock here, but I can definitely come in here, get some lock on the wheel, and kind of full rally mode this thing around if I want to. And it's amazing what a 7,000 pound truck can do if you get some good winter tires on it. Coming in a little bit of sideways and absolutely having uh, you know, a blast of a time. Just absolutely full rally mode sending this thing. Now there is actually a rally mode, which is one of my favorite modes to drive the truck in as well. 
and this gives it a really kind of rowdy oversteering kind of character. You can turn stability half on, so it's still working for you in the background. But I think the biggest thing this snow mode does is it doesn't increase the fun of the vehicle in the snow. It increases the stability and the sureness. I mean, there's pretty much nothing I can do here. I'm full throttle right off of a cliff, driving like a complete idiot, right? Just And, and the truck gives me the confidence to know, okay, so many safety systems coming in that I can be totally ham-fisted drive like an idiot and we're safe. Uh, now, of course, you know, you can't overcome the laws of physics, but just, you know, if you are a new driver in snow, if you have your family in the vehicle and you're going for the safest drive, if you're in traffic, I would use this mode in the snow or the ice uh, really as much as, as you need. I'm definitely gonna be planning to because most of the time I'm not trying to drive like an idiot when I drive around. YouTube might say different, but um, you know, sometimes I just wanna to get to my destination safely, throw it in snow mode, put regen to low and you're good to go. So now we're coming up to the downhill where we're gonna try some of the regenerative braking uh, functions here. So what do we say we start in all purpose with regen on high, which is how uh, I believe I was using it in the off-road setting when I first discovered this problem. So we have the, the windblown hilltop here, just coming up, cresting, and then this is where we're gonna do, I say, 30 mile per hour deceleration, something like that. So now we're back into deep snow. I mean, this is legit fresh powder right here. And what I'm gonna do is 30 miles an hour, we're just coming over the, the crest to the steepest part, and I'm gonna lift off of the throttle completely in three, two, one and complete lift. Here we go, full lift in, in uh, high regen. So I can feel and I can watch the regen gauge slightly moving there, coming to a slower stop, transitioning to friction brakes and full wheel lockup. We're completely sliding there at the end. So the last, I don't know, four feet, five feet, something like that. And again, on ice, it would be even more aggressive. We have complete wheel lockup and no control over vehicle movement. Here we are, three miles an hour, complete lockup, and we're just skidding there. Let's see if we notice the same in snow mode with regen in low, because they specifically mentioned they worked on this tuning um, to reduce wheel lockup. Um, and, and especially on a slippery surface, you might no notice even more, um, uh, more speed increase if it's really grippy, not grippy. So here we are, 30 miles an hour, full lift, less regen, super controlled at the moment. Of course, I can hit the brake pedal and blend in friction brakes if needed with full ABS. Here we are, seven miles an hour, coming to a complete stop, no wheel lock up at all. How about do you think, Alyssa? Yeah, that was a lot smoother and it just felt more secure. Totally secure. Here, let's go 10 miles an hour, full lift off. I can actually feel it lock a little bit. Look, full, full wheel movement control. All the way down to zero. So very nice job uh, for the downhills in snow or ice. If you have a steep driveway, 100% recommend uh, this setting right here. I mean, even in situations like this, downhill, sharp left, and then a right-hand corner with giant cliffs on either side of us, right? I'm off the throttle completely and I'm still maintaining really good steering control here, even at pretty big steering angles. So that's, one hell of a, an improvement. And I actually thought that that was a little bit of an oversight from their engineering team and I'm glad they fixed it. Sad it took them almost a year to fix it, but glad that they got that fixed. So big props to the Rivian team for introducing snow mode here. Um, we're gonna get some shots on the exterior to give to sort of intermix with the clips that you probably have already seen. We're getting 0.7 miles per kilowatt hour. So just chugging the juice right here. <laughs> probably a lot just keeping us warm. <laughs> yeah, oh, we got the heater blasting. Yeah. The heater in this thing is so powerful. Yeah, it so really powerful. is. So um, powerful. And here, I'll just give you one last example. Let's go snow mode stability off and see how the handling balance is. Oh, very neutral. I'm actually having to continue to steer. No hint of oversteering here. It's utilizing the traction of all four wheels and tires, coming in progressively, adding throttle. Very, very smooth, very neutral balance. I like how each mode changes the character of the truck. 
um, I think most people are gonna end up driving with stability on. But let's actually go up this super steep hill. If you look over here to the right, you'll see this. And here I am coming in under full regen with turning on the wheel. Wow, snow mode is the jam. All you need on your Rivian are a set of Nokian uh, winter tires and um, snow mode. You're, you go anywhere you want. So here we are, full stop on ice. I mean, this is a legit hard surface to start on. Let's give it a full power. Great traction control tuning, still floored. 35 miles an hour, still floored, picking up pace now at 60 miles an hour, still floored, 70. <laughs> Just freaking rips, it's so cool. Amazing traction control. Really fun to feel all four motors working sort of to figure out how to get you down the road. And what's what I really like about this snow mode and just to kind of leave you with the last impression, this is not to increase fun, this is to increase your feeling of safety, assurance on the road, and like I said, you can drive it like a complete idiot and you're totally fine. So there you go, snow mode is now in Rivian and um, couldn't be happier. Uh, glad it's here just before the big snowy season. Big props to the Rivian engineers for constantly improving this truck. This truck has gotten so much better than the day I bought it. Uh, honestly, it's needed to, it's needed some of these updates, but um, now that you can do so many things like turning on your heated seats from your phone, just wonderful little updates here and there. And um, there you have it. Thanks for watching another Out of Spec Reviews video. Keep an eye for more cold weather reviews coming your way soon. And we'll see you on another reviews video soon. Guys, just one last thing before we totally end. I just found kind of a weird bug with the snow mode and I wanna try it in uh, all purpose. So I'm just gonna come full ABS braking to a stop here, okay? So come full stop, floor it, and it's gonna spin up. But then we're gonna hit this like plateau. So like right now there's more the truck can do. It's just limiting power, limiting power. I'm floored. It's cutting everything back and then we get the next wallop of power. So the one thing I'm picturing is like merging onto the highway, giving it more and more throttle. And it was definitely holding us way back on acceleration. I just did it three times in a row before it unleashed full power. So it, it almost feels like um, they, they just need to like uh, get, get, be a little bit less aggressive on traction control uh, and do it uh, maybe the functions in motor like Tesla does because it's constantly checking. It just feels like it hits this very weird wall and you have to like keep your foot down to blow through it. Now my foot was welded to the floor there. So what I wanna try is going into all purpose. Let's put stability on full and we'll try it in this mode as soon as the light goes green and see if it does the same thing. Uh, and let me just tell you while we're at the red light a little bit of what I'm talking about with the traction control. It feels like a lot of the traction control is being done off in a different module than the motors themselves. There feels like there's a slight delay. Unlike Tesla, I believe Lucid, Taycan, EQS, BMW, that do the um, traction control in motor. So let's try it now, 25 miles an hour, floor it. I'm getting that same thing, 50 miles an hour, 54, floored, and then boom, full power. So it does it in all purpose and snow mode regardless of mode, it happens differently, but if you keep your foot in it long enough, it's just like, whoa, let me get this whole situation under control, figure out what's going on, get you back normally, and then output more power. I don't I don't think it's an ESC, a yaw stability command that, that's kicking in, because we didn't really have that much movement. I mean, the truck was moving around a little bit, but yeah, I really think they need to just open up the power more frequently, let the wheel spin, let's, you know, get, be a little bit more aggressive on the traction control and then pull it back quicker if it's starting to spin up from there. So it's really hard to tune for these things, but let me just come down again. We'll do one last just to see if I'm really losing my mind. Floored, floored, floored. Traction control's flashing, giving more and more power. Did not do it there. So that felt really good, but we have replicated it five times. So that's one bug that I found in this whole thing really actually good ABS tuning there. I was able to keep it pretty much on threshold braking just out of ABS for that, that whole time and it felt 
felt pretty aggressive. I was getting some wheel lock up. That was nice. So, there's the end of the video. Thank <laughs> you.